brain teasers for you. What do you call a 4 Series BMW with a 2,998cc engine? These days you call it a 440. The straight six cylinder engine in this car features a twin scroll single turbocharger, has double Vanos, valve tronic and precision injection. What that all offers up is 240 kilowatts of peak power at 5,500 rpm and 450 newton meters of torque on a nice flat plateau between 1,380 and 5,000 rpm. It's got an 8 speed automatic transmission and that 8 speed has manual control available to it through paddle shifters and also you've got a manual controller down here where you'd expect to find a regular gear lever. It's a very lovely place to spend some time inside this BMW 440 and no matter which of the 8 speeds on offer you're in you've always got plenty of tow. Second part of our brain teaser what do you call a coupe that's not a coupe? Well, you call it a convertible. Now excuse the hat and the sunglasses, but I always feel slightly self-conscious driving a convertible. And a BMW convertible particularly, I think, can, in some instances, pull shade towards you. You know what I mean? People can throw hate at you because, uh, Let's face it, it's a pretty out there way of showing your wealth. This car costs $124,900, so it's not an insubstantial amount of money to be flattering around the place. So that's why I'm putting the hat on, just to protect my, my bald bonce, and also the glasses, just to protect my anonymity. Hmm, yeah. The folding roof mechanism on this car is quite intriguing. The way it separates the roof halves and folds them up, stacks them on top of one another and, and puts the whole lot in the boot. But it does come at a penalty, in fact 215 kilograms of penalty. This car weighs in at 1,845 kgs, which is, you know, say, over a couple of hundred kgs more than the coupe that it's based on. So it's like carrying around three reasonable sized friends, or two quite large friends, or one morbidly obese friend. But fortunately, those friends have been chopped up and distributed around the uh, car for weight distribution, and so it's still got a, a 51 to 49 front to rear weight bias. So you don't really feel the weight in terms of putting the car out of balance. A lot of the weight has gone into the strengthening of the car to stop that terrible scuttle shake that convertibles tend to have when they have the roof taken away. And BMW's done a pretty good job with that in this car. I still am feeling a slight trembling of the steering wheel on occasion, but it's uh, quite subdued and nothing to really cause you any grief. It doesn't feel like the car's gonna shake itself to bits over 200, 300,000 kilometers. The roof takes about 20 seconds to do its folding routine, whether it's going up or down. And uh, when it is going down, the whole process is finished with the car raising all four windows. It does reduce the wind turbulence quite a lot in here. In fact, I'll, I'll try and demonstrate that on the microphone. I'm just gonna hold 60 kilometers an hour here, bring all four windows up with a simple one button that they courteously provide. And I hope you can hear straight away that the amount of blow by the microphone has decreased. It's certainly a more tranquil wind environment in here with all four windows up. It's not a good look, I guess, but you know, for the sake of easy conversation with your passenger, it's probably a worthwhile facility to explore. BMW's done as much as it can to provide a comfortable open-air motoring experience. The seats are lovely and comfortable, they're heated. You also have this lovely neck warmer air scarf thing, which blows hot air up the back of your neck. It's um, a little bit disconcerting to start with, but at highway speeds, with the roof down, it's a really nice way of staying warm. Now, the rear seat accommodation is actually quite good. I can sit myself in the rear seat if I had the front seat set for my own driving position. So, I thought it might be a little bit more compromise and leg room in the back there, but not so. BMW always focus on the driver, and I really appreciate that philosophy. There are a couple of little annoyances. For instance, the start-stop system. This car has a manual handbrake, so if you stop at the lights with your foot on the brake, 
of course the engine stops. Take your foot off the brake in, and in place, put the handbrake on and the engine starts again. You know, if this car had an electric handbrake, I'd imagine it would be calibrated so that when you put the parking brake on, the engine would still stay in stop mode. But not so in this particular version with the manual handbrake. Things like that, a little bit of a, a bugbear. But the start-stop system is so easily deactivated, it doesn't really cause me any grief at all. And it's a lovely, creamy, straight six-cylinder engine. So when it does crank up, you don't get that terrible shudder you get from a transverse four-cylinder front-wheel drive type car where the whole thing shakes. The 440i comes with uh, the driver experience control. So that has four modes, Echo Pro, Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus. And incrementally, that dials up the responsiveness of the throttle, um, hardens up the dampers, quickens up the steering, and uh, generally improves the performance of the car. It also pulls back the traction control and vehicle stability systems um, as you get up towards Sports Plus. Frankly, I've been quite happy to chuff around in normal and sport mode. I have tried Sport Plus mode as well, and yeah, the car is very exciting at high speed. But it's not really asking to be spanked round corners and you know, really thrown into bends at high speed. It can do that, but I think it's those extra 215 kgs of body weight over the coupe and the fact that you're in an open top car that just kind of, it just chills you out. It just makes you relax a bit more and just say, hey, calm down, you know, calm down, what's your hurry? And I quite like it for that. Now because the boot is compromised for space when the roof's folded, BMW has come up with an ingenious system that shows you where you can fit stuff and where you can't fit stuff. So don't worry, you're not going to crush your, your milk and eggs by putting it in the wrong place of the boot because the car won't let the roof function if there's stuff that's going to get squished. Because it's quite a small slot that you have to deal with when the roof is down, to get stuff out of the boot, They've given you a, a little rocker switch which lifts the whole back of the car um, boot arrangement up, takes the roof panels out of the way, you can get your stuff out of the boot, shut it all back down again, and it's all tidy. Now as you'd expect with a car costing close on $125,000, the 440i convertible comes equipped with all sorts of uh, driver assistance and safety aids, lane departure warning, lane keep assist, forward collision warning and auto brake. And it also has what I think is one of the best features I've come across in a car is surround view, which uses tiny little cameras on the front of the front wheel arches and gives you a, basically a 360 degree view around the car when you're maneuvering, like backing and things in the parking spaces. I think it's great. This car frankly has surprised me. I thought it would be a bit more pose and a bit more show than go, but it's got plenty of go. It's got plenty of go. I mean, any car that can do 0 to 100 in less than five and a half seconds is, is a potent machine. It's got a beautiful engine, great eight-speed gearbox. The brakes are really strong and reassuring. It holds the road well. You get a little bit of scuttle shake through the steering wheel, which reminds you that you don't have a, a steel roof as a backbone for the car but really that's really nitpicking. They've done a great job of making this car taut and rigid feeling. Yeah, you're carrying another couple of hundred kgs over what you'd carry if you just had the, the fixed head coupe, but I think for the extra driving enjoyment that dropping the roof provides you, I think there's not too much of a penalty to pay. It's just beautifully weighted, beautifully built, beautifully balanced, beautifully powered. It's hard to find one car that does everything for you. So I guess with the 440i convertible, you're kind of getting two cars. You're getting a regular coupe with all the security and insulation and, and subdued cabin environment that that offers you. But when the mood takes you and the weather's right, you just pull down a button and uh, 30 seconds later, you've got an open top car that is very satisfying. It just offers you another whole dimension of motoring enjoyment. And isn't that what cars are all supposed to be about? Enjoyment. Yeah.